What's up, y'all? It's your boy Carcino here. And this is the truth behind the beef between Puffy and Steve Stout. First of all, let me start off by saying this. Steve Stout, for those who don't know, let me explain to you how Steve Stout is and who he is. Steve Stout has been in the business for years being a a man behind the scenes working for powerful people. He's supposed to be the guy that generates the message that corporate America wants to get over to urban America. And they use Steve Stout for this tool. He was Tommy Matola's boy over there with Sony and they used him to help bridge Mariah Carey over to the urban market they wanted to push her more to the blacks and they needed someone to do that and who else than Steve Stout huh? right so in conjunction with this there was another guy who's the same way except for he worked a little bit differently named Sean Combs where he followed the orders of another powerful man in the business named Clive Davis and anything Clive says Combs Puffy followed to a T Except for there's a major difference. Puffy, Sean Combs, was more street savvy than uh, Mr. Stout. Stout is more business, uh, brand marketing, connections, and P. Diddy is a hustler from Harlem. And he's street. And no matter how you dress it up, no matter how many waves you put on them, no matter how good the lining is, you ain't going to get rid of that street, that hood, that's in you. And Clive Davis liked it because he made Clive a lot of money. Whenever there was a problem, he knew Combs was the guy that was going to get it done. Not Andre Harrell. Harrell didn't have the work ethic of Puffy. That's the difference. And he told, totally chose to bag the guy who was supposed to be the assistant for Andre Harrell. And said, no, this is the guy I can use. He, he has the energy to push. So, with this being the case... Steve Stout played a very key part in crippling hip hop to what you got right now. Steve Stout, I wouldn't say single handedly, but he's the guy to help bridge you over to where you see all these commercials and advertisement with rappers with these ridiculous companies that's helping bringing down the genre. So, anyway, Mariah Carey was one of his famed artists. He worked with Will Smith too, uh, as far as brand marketing, a couple of deals with Will and Jada got involved with the investment deal. But, let me tell y'all, because I, I, I'm going to give y'all a two for one. <laughs> Okay, I gotta give y'all a two for one with Stout because the stories intertwine with one another. And you're gonna understand it in the end. Steve Stout got close to Nas. And it was really his first time working with a rapper or a rap artist to this degree. Like normally, um, like, he, like I said, he worked with Will Smith, Mariah Carey, Mary J. Blige. A lot of people thought like he was dating Mary J at the time and messing around with her 
And Puffy was messing around with her for a little bit, and that's how they really met up. But no, it wasn't like that at all. It was uh, more business related. She made he made her a lot of money, and she trusted his opinion more than anybody. And Steve Stout, I believe, introduced her to her husband. And there's a lot of rumors said that Stout told her, "No, you're gonna marry this man, Kenny Isaacs. He's gonna get you where you need to be." And he's going to help monitor you and all this uh, lie. Complete lie. So, I could dispel all those rumors. Um, Mary was only dealing with Steve Stout because Steve Stout made her a lot of money. And Steve Stout, <laughs> she, he trusts, she trusts anything he says because every time he says something, it comes true. He brings some relationships to the table. You bring in Budweiser. He's bringing uh, any company he can find. Heineken. He's taking all these deals that they tried to dangle in front of rappers before. Rappers was like, nah, we ain't taking it. Because they knew taking that deal would come, kind of seal their fates. But uh, Steve Stout got introduced to Nas through Mariah Carey. And Mariah and Nas is pretty close from back in the day. And all of a sudden, they're sitting there and uh, she introduces Steve Stout to Nas. And Nas is like, okay, you know, I'm like, yeah, so he's going to do this for Nas, he's going to do that. So when they coming out with, it was written and they was working on the album and Bringing in uh, Steve Stout, Nas uh, needed some financial help. Steve Stout, boom. What you need, Nas? You need that? I get it for you. You need that? I got it for you. You need this, man? I got it. Don't worry about it. I got it, brother. And that's what he would call him, brother. Now, Nas didn't really trust him because he's like, okay, he's just like anybody else coming around here. So, all of a sudden, Nas had a little situation, you know. Springfield Gardens, I don't know if y'all know about it. We can't go into it too much. Let's just say there was a situation where, where uh, Nas could have went down too. You know, he could have easily been him involved. Uh, 113 Precinct. And who comes and gets him? Steve Stout. It was an incident that happened. Nas didn't have anything to do with it, but he could have. Could have went involved. Could have been easily linked to it. But Stout, Stout took care of it. So he felt indebted to Steve Stout as a brother. Like, man, this brother came down at 3 in the morning and just got me up out. <laughs> like, no charges. Like, I ain't normally you had to go to court to get something thrown out. But because his power is, he saw Steve Stout come down there and he's like, oh, this guy must have got some clout. So Nas is free. Free to do whatever in the world he want to do. And all of a sudden, he was like, man, yeah, I'm going to work with this dude. Yeah, you my manager. So Steve Stout, the commissioner, is involved. And they're going to put out the firm album after his album. And it's going to do so many millions of records sold. And you're going to make like a dollar per record or two dollars a record. I'm going to make sure you have the largest deal ever. You're going to be the biggest artist in the world. You know, spinning it so they can... Now I was going to see the dollar signs. And after the firm flopped, a lot of people just was like, yeah, you know, like, yeah, that just happened. <laughs> so I Am album comes out, all that stuff, and after the firm, and Steve Stout was basically involved for that project, then it just blew up from there. Now, for those who don't know, let me bring you up to speed with Diddy. 
Diddy and Nas have always been cool since back in the big days. I mean, bringing Big and Puffy was there. And Steve Stout is cool, you know, he's an NR and all them. They know him. They all know each other. But there's rules of things you do and things you don't do. Now, when they shot the video with Hype Williams for Hate Me Now, uh, Hype Williams said, okay, alright, this is the one, you know, what we're going to do. Hype is, Hype Williams is one of the best directors, period. Like, making music videos look like movies. That's his job. That's what Hype Williams does. They're, his videos were like $500,000 videos just for four or five minute videos. Are you kidding? That kind of money was laid out for that? That kind of budget? It didn't even make sense. And then, on top of all of these things that was happening, all of these budget monies and the best director in the world, you mean to tell me at this point when he says everything looks good on our end and Diddy comes in and says, ah, I think we have a problem. Diddy got on the horn and he called, uh, he called uh, Clive Davis. Well, Clive was calling him and said, I saw a glimpse of what y'all finna put out. And I would lose this image here and you being on the cross. Just cut that out. From more than what I understand, I think that was uh, that was the main sticking point. Like some type of uh, investment, or it was gonna offend some people that they had relationships with. If they was to see Sean Puffy Combs on a cross, they wouldn't have been able to just say, "Oh, he's just doing it for the art." They'd have been like, "He's insulting Jesus Christ," and make a big mockery of it. And they didn't want it. Clive didn't want that kind of heat coming back on them with protests and stuff like that so that's what I believe the issue was because no one sat me down and told me this was the issue Clive had all I can tell you is that Clive Davis had a very major issue but that issue makes the most sense so he called Steve Stout and tell Steve right off the bat, uh, like Steve, this is uh, this is what we want to do. This is the direction we want to go in, and basically that's it. You know, like take me off, just cut the scene of me on the uh, tail height. You know, to go ahead and make the cut. You know, um, cut me out of the video, the part with me being on the cross. Tell him to make the cut, and Steve was like, "All right, I got you." I got it. And next thing you know, Steve Stout told, uh, supposedly, Steve said he told Hype Williams to make the cut. But MTV already had the reel of the video. So they had the original raw cut of the video first. Like they sent it in advance to MTV. So when the cuts was made, when the cuts went ahead and was made, it was for all the other videos. So Steve uh, uh, did tell, you know, Hype, like, we can't do that with Puffy. So Hype had to go and re-edit it and then put it back out. But while he was doing that, MTV had the original cut. So when the video aired the, on MTV and it had Puffy in it, and Puffy was like, I told them to cut it. I told this is Steve Stout just going ahead and see him run it. So Puffy didn't even think. Because Clive just called and said, I just watched MTV. You told me you took care of it. And now we finna have this controversy. So Puff got chewed out by Clive Davis. And lo and behold, if that happens to him, his master's not happy. So Puffy come over there kick in the door and it, it was a champagne bottle already in there. Cracker, cracker, crack. crack, crack. 
beat up Steve Stout. And Stout called Knox. And was looking for protection. Like, man, y'all got to come over here, man. Y'all got to go get Combs, man. He just came and whooped on me. And he was a little salty at Nas because Nas didn't come and all the stuff he done did for Nas. And Nas didn't jump up to go protect him. To, like, go get Sean Combs. And, like, I'm going to go get Puffy. And we're going to beat up Puffy. That ain't Nas. Like, man, get your homies. Get over there and get... They wanted he want Steve Stout wanted Nas and Queens Bridge and all them to run over there and beat down Puff. And that was just not gonna happen. So he felt a certain type of way about it. <laughs> and they fell out. Now, they patched things up later on, like and then they start like after he, Nas was hot again. He's like, oh, now nah, it's hot. Let me start working with him again. <laughs> See if we can work something out. But the truth be told, Stout was already upset with Nas because Nas turned down so many promotional deals. Nas had so much offered to him. All the stuff you see 50 Cent and them have, Jay-Z, all this stuff was offered to Nas. All this stuff was offered to a lot of these artists. They just didn't have a bridge of someone they trusted to do the deals with because hip hop artists always felt that if they take a deal like this they're killing the genre you don't want to let big corporate come in because then they'll start changing things and what happened is all these avenues that were open to rappers rappers start taking them they was like shoot you gonna pay me for? I don't care about this I'm gonna get my money but artists back in the days, they weren't into that. It was like, we gonna make money, all of us can make money. Now it's like, only you can make money. And everybody else gonna starve. And we'll find another one or two to pay, but that's just how it's gonna be for now. Now they control the industry. They tell you what's good. Be like, but why is it don't want that artist on the card? gonna be like, huh? We don't want him on the marquee. He wouldn't sign this deal, so we don't want him. And Steve Stout brought those deals to Nas. Nas turned them down. And that's when we're going to segue into part two of this. And this is part two of this. <laughs> Now, let's go. Now Nas and uh, Steve Stout are not really talking no more. And Puffy and Steve Stout decided to not go to the police. Uh, Clive Davis, they, they talked to Steve Stout. They got everybody involved. And once they did... They were able to work out something via price. Uh, Clive Davis was very happy with what Combs did to Stout. And showed him unbelievable loyalty after that. Steve Stout got paid by Clive Davis. Puffy didn't have to come out of his pockets with anything. Clive loved it. And the video was playing. It didn't have Combs on the cross. And he got it. He's like, sometimes that's how you got to handle business. That's how you got to take care of business sometimes. It gets physical. Because <laughs> everybody's got passion. Now, after this, this is where part two segues. Stout decides, well, this Nas guy ain't working out. This ain't working out with Nas. He ain't got my back like that. So, going through Mariah Carey, he starts talking with another R&B rap artist that's more in his avenue, Jay Z. Now, it was made to look like an accident that he met with Jay and everything, and then he was like, "I need to talk with you, you know, like let's let's have a conversation." So 
they sat down, had a conversation at the table, and he was telling Jay, like, Jay, you missing out so many deals. Like, Dame hasn't even, what did Dame Dash bring to the table? Like, I know he's your friend, and I'm not getting in between that, but I'm like, let's get this money while it's on the table. Like, you saw what I did with Mariah, you saw what I did with, uh, with Nas's career, and look where he's going without me. So, Jay was like, yeah, 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 I need all that. Like, I need all this type of deals. So, he got Jay-Z a Heineken deal. Well, Jay-Z was in commercials. And he got him to, to a deal with Sprite, a Sprite Fest. Well, they had Jay-Z in the Sprite Fest. So, Jay was able to pull up a lot of money out of the deal. And then, uh, basically promote his young artist that he had coming up. And what else they did? They did a lot of stuff. But everything that that Nas turned down, Jay-Z took. And Jay-Z was able to get a large shoe contract with Reebok. And once he got this deal with Reebok, you know, at this time, Tommy Mottola is removed from power where he is. So Tommy's not even his new guy that he's dealing with. So now, you're dealing with Jimmy Iovine when you're dealing with Stout. You know, Stout likes to kiss up to Jimmy, who's best friends with Clive. So he's basically in the same party. But Jane Dash ain't happy about Steve Stout being around. So Steve Stout gets up there and starts saying, Dame Dash was angry towards me, Jay, I was trying to do this. So Jay is gravitating more to Steve Stout because Steve Stout knows what Jay-Z likes. Jay-Z is impressed with, like, Jay, we, what, driving? No, man, we flying a private plane, man. He'll rent a private plane, put Jay-Z on the private plane, and then they fly out. And Dash is like, where's Jay? He's like, oh, Jay flying there. Jay taking a private plane. Just Jay and Steve Stout. Nobody else. Everybody else got to take the uh, bus. He wants Jay to be there early so Jay can get some rest and do everything else. Everybody else, he's like, man, we all taking a plane. They took a commercial flight. <laughs> Dan was like, we all taking planes. And they all got on the commercial flights and... <laughs> saw what they could do with the commercial flights. Somebody else drove. And it, it was crazy. The whole thing was just crazy. They all got there like a little bit around the same time. And he's like, I know what you're trying to do with my artists. He said, I know what you're trying to do with my artists. You're trying to split up the rock. The rock ain't never going to break up. See this tat right here, brother? That's for life. You can't break that. <laughs> so, he Dame is showing Steve Stout his tat. <laughs> Steve Stout's in a two thousand dollar suit. <laughs> He's not impressed, and Dame got money, but it's mostly street money and street deals, and nobody want to deal with him. And they did everything in their power to make sure Dame Dash don't have those type of relationships with any of those companies. They're gonna block him from doing all these type of deals. Uh, he had the shoe contract with the state property with the kids. That's what he had, Dane. And he basically took the money from that that was supposed to go into the into some of the artists. Dane kept all the money and rolled it into another business. And it just became a big mess. But Jay Z had already lost trust in Dane Dash at this point. Because he gave Dash something to do, like an assignment. And Dash is like, Jay. I don't work for you. That's what he told him. He told him, I don't work for you. We were brothers. So if you ask me to do something, I'm going to do something on the strength. But I don't work for you. You got an assistance. You got like seven seven assistants. You want to pay, pay all them assistants, Jay. That's all right. You're a grown man. You do your own thing. But you my brother. So if you ask me to do something, I do it on the strength. But I don't work for you, brother. And once he told him that, 
Jake, for some reason, was like, oh, okay, I get it. Dapped him up. They laughed. Like, man, I ain't, no, I ain't like that. I am just wanted to see if you could do it because I can't get uh, Steve and nobody else. He was like, man, consider it done, man. I got you. And Dame didn't do it. I don't know what exactly it was, but Dame didn't do it, and that put Jay in a, like, okay, he just gave me the brother speech, and then he still didn't do it, and he said he did. So they was at odds, and... And right, I think Jay was going on vacation, and Steve Stout had him set up, and he had never been out the country like that to on a vacation. And he was like, "Man, you've been in doing this for this long, and ain't really been out the country on vacay." So uh, he's like, "I'm gonna send you over here to the south of France and Turk and Caicos, and you can go over here and." And chill out in your visa and use my um, bookaroos and all them. Man, Steve Stout had him out there on vacation, sands in his toes, living it up. Like, Man, just take two weeks, go on vacation, relax. You Jay Z. Jay would start feeling himself like, yeah, I'm Jay Z. <laughs> so, on the radio, uh, well, yeah, on the radio, that's when uh, they announced. Cameron will be the new vice president of Rockefeller Records. While Jay was going on vacation, Jay was like already getting in position to start something with Jay. Like they can replace Jay. And I was like, yeah. See, Cam came in, he sold a million records, doing this and that. We gonna just run the company with Cam. So they were like, man, what about Memphis Bleak and the rest of them? And that's when Jay was getting word, had to call from where he was on VK. And when he came home, he had the radio in, like, call in and tell him, like, that was the case. He found that out on vacation. You know, like, they was doing that. But at that point, they were already, like, they, they done. And Steve Stout was in the middle of it. So, Dane was doing what he could do to try to sabotage things. But stay like, no, I'm still a brother. So Jay kept him around. And they looked like brothers in public. But Jay was knowing he was getting in position. Because he was going to get rid of all of them. After this, they were done. After they got their re-up money. And after everything he did. He didn't want to do business with them no more. He didn't want to do business with Biggs. And he did not want to do business with Dane. No more. But they could still be Rockefeller until it's time. And that's when, you know, Stout, Steve Stout told him, like, just relax. We're going to work on these deals. We got to talk to all the powers of that be. You know, we're going to give you Def Jam Records. You're going to run it. You don't need Rockefeller. If you want to use Rockefeller, you can. But we'll make you the president of Def Jam and this and that. And we'll get these guys out of the way. And we'll just pay them out. And that's what happened. Everybody got paid out. And Steve Stout, working with, was working with uh, Jay, making power moves. And then he went back to working with Nas. So, that's that. Now you know how that went. And for those who are interested, a lot of people ask me, like, what is Steve Stout and how did Steve Stout do this? How did Steve do that? Steve did a lot of things. And during this process, he briefly worked with 50 Cent, as we all know, as part of that Reebok deal with Jay-Z. And what Steve Stout does now is whatever the corporate tell him to do. If Jimmy tells him to do something, he go out there and do it. He go out there and he blasts Dame Dash. Oh, Dame Dash would be so his temper and no one, maybe somebody would want to work with him. He goes out and strategically mentions all oh, 50 Cent and if, if he can just tone down his aggressive content. Aggressive content with 50 Cent? Are you kidding me? After what they're putting on the radio today, and you talking about Fifty Cent aggressive content, when he has some of the number one R and B 
records of all time? Like, are you kidding me? Candy shop <laughs> in the club, and he needs to tone down his aggressive content. Those type of messages is what got, almost got him whooped at the basketball game when 50 Cent confronted him. Steve Stout is always going to be a yes man. And hey, it's to his own right. That's some people are what they are. And he just want to do what he's told, make his money off the next artist coming up and it basically has destroyed hip hop so all the money is going to be gone now only a couple of handful of artists will get paid and now people from the hood they really ain't going to be making too much you might get one make make some and the other one might make some crumbs but you're going to make everybody else rich but you're going to end up with nothing when it's all said and done so Thank you, Steve Stout, for help breaking us down. But this video has been well too long. I got to really cut this off.